So I mentioned how some of our projectile problems are not going to start and end at the same height. We've done some problems where I have an object launched from the ground that ends up on the ground. But here we're going to have a projectile that's launched from the ground and ends up somewhere else vertically. So we have a projectile that's launched at 23 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. The projectile lands on a 4.0 meter building. And we want to find what the final velocity was when it hit the building. Maybe we're interested in figuring out, is that final velocity enough to break a window, or who knows? Um, but for whatever reason, that's what we're interested in. So the first things that you need to do are to figure out what you're given and maybe draw a diagram. I'm going to start with a diagram to help make sense of the problem. So I have the ground. My projectile is being launched at an angle of 43 degrees above the horizontal. And after it's launched, it's going to follow a parabolic trajectory, which means it's going to follow a curved motion. And eventually, it lands on a building. You don't have to get too crazy with your drawing, but I'm just going to use a square. And so that building has a total height of 4.0 meters. Now that I have the drawing up, I want to actually get my assumptions down. So like usual, I'm going to split my page down the middle to separate my x and y directions. Now in the x direction, I want to pay particular attention to both acceleration and velocity. In the x direction, because in physics we're making things as simple as we can uh, since we are not in college and even beyond. Uh, we need computers to do some heavy simulations. But acceleration is going to be 0 meters per second squared. And then V initial, I want to know how fast the projectile is going in the x direction. Right now, my V initial 23 meters per second is at an angle. So again, use your vector knowledge. That's why we studied vectors, so that we could use them. So I'm going to use my trigonometry to draw a right triangle. And so my initial velocity in the x direction is going to be the bottom of the triangle. And the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be the vertical part of the triangle. So because v initial in the x direction is the adjacent, I'm going to use cosine. So v initial in the x direction is going to be 23 cosine. 43. And if you put that in your calculator, you find out with two significant figures that this is 17 meters per second. Well, we also know that in the x direction, v initial is the same thing as v final. So I'm just going to label that too. In the y direction, again, finding the y component of my triangle, v initial in the y direction is going to be 23 because it's the opposite side. I'm going to use sine. And putting that in your calculator, you should find using two significant figures, the answer is 16 meters per second. We don't have any assumption in the y direction that the final velocity is the initial velocity. So the other assumption that we have is gravity gives us an acceleration of negative 9.8. 81 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's try to see if there's anything else that we might have. In the x direction, the only other two things left are delta x, which we know absolutely nothing about. We don't know how far the building is. And delta t, which again, we know nothing about. We don't know how long it takes to get to the building. For the y direction, we, like I said, we don't have vf. We don't have delta t. But we do have delta y, because I know if the projectile starts at the ground, ends up on top of this building, it moved from 0 to 4.0. So that means that delta y, my vertical displacement, is 4.0 meters. So now I have to figure out, what am I actually looking for? The question asks me, what is the final velocity of the projectile? Well, we learned that velocity is a vector, and vectors have 
magnitude and direction. Not only that, vectors are composed of an X component and a Y component. Well, right now, I'm going to highlight this kind of in red. Right now, we do have the final velocity of the X component because that's the same as the initial velocity in the X component. However, looking at the Y side of things, we have no idea what V final in the Y direction is. We don't know with what speed that projectile is falling on the building, just straight up and down. So that means we need to find that. Well, we also learned in one directional motion that if we have three, one, two, three variables, and we're looking for a fourth one, we can use those constant acceleration equations. So again, just to remind you, and this should always be the first thing you do on a test or quiz, delta x is one half v initial plus v final delta t. And again, just a reminder, these delta x are for the one dimension, so really we can use them as delta y. One half acceleration delta t squared plus v initial delta t, v final, acceleration delta t plus v initial, v final squared is v initial squared plus 2a delta x, not delta t. So looking at those equations, I need an equation with v initial, acceleration, displacement, v final. The only equation that satisfies that, the initial v final a and displacement, is this last one. And again, we're going to translate this into the y direction. So that means that v final in the y direction squared equals v initial in the y direction squared plus 2 acceleration. Instead of delta x, we're going to use delta y. So v final, that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to leave that as a variable. V initial, we have that. We calculated it right here. So I'm going to plug 16 in. So I have 16 squared plus 2 acceleration. We know that that's negative 9.81. And again, I'm not writing my units just to save some space, but I do know that's meters per second squared. And delta y, I know sometimes we've had a discussion about whether delta y should be positive or negative, but here it's starting from the ground, landing on top of a building. So overall, this projectile is going up, and so it stays positive, 4.0 meters. So you end up getting that vfy is going to be the square root, because if I take square root of both sides, I can get rid of that squared. The square root of 256 minus 78.48. So all I did there was just figure out what is all this stuff equal to. I just did that in my calculator. And in the end, we get 13.3. Now I want you to be a little bit careful with this. When you take the square root of something, in math, your teachers probably yelled at you to put a plus or minus. Really, this is plus or minus. You need to do some interpretation to figure out in this problem, is it going up or is it coming down? Well, for V final, we're looking for when it lands. And when it lands, it's coming down. So that means that this V final should really be a negative. 13.3 meters per second. The only reason that's important is because when we go to find the resultant, and so some of you may be wondering why am I saying the resultant? Well, let's look, look back at what the question asked. It asked what was the final velocity? Remember I said final velocity is a vector. A vector has two components. One of them is the x component, one of them is the y component. Now that we have both of those, the x is 17 meters per second, the y is negative 13.3 meters per second, we can draw our resultant triangle and figure that out. So if I draw just a point, point, 
and then I use my x. x is 17, which is positive, so I'm going to go to the right. vy, the final in the y direction, is negative, so from there I'm going to go down. That's my triangle. So I'm going to label them 17 meters per second, and this one is negative 13.3 meters per second. And really, you don't have to put the negative because we're going down. So if you really, do, if you don't want to label that, you don't have to. My theta is always going to go wherever I started, and so I'm just going to label that. So now the only step is to use the Pythagorean theorem. I have a right triangle. I can do 17 squared plus 13.3 squared. Take the square root of that. And so I figure out that this, v final, right here is my v final vector, ends up being 21.6 meters per second. Now, again, velocity is a vector. A vector has magnitude and direction. We just found the magnitude right now. We need to find the direction. Well, because it's the right triangle, we can use our tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. And so theta, my direction, is going to be the inverse tangent of the opposite, which is 13.3. You can ignore the negative when you plug it into tangent, over 17. And so that ends up being an angle of 38.0 degrees. Sorry, my marker is being a little fudgy. So in that point, we now have our answer. We have both magnitude and direction. So if I wanted to write it formally, I can say that this is 21.6 meters per second at an angle of 38.0 degrees. Now, this is not northeast southwest. I know we've done a lot of just directional stuff with northeast southwest, but here we don't we don't have that. It's just forward up down. So, I'm going to describe this 38.0 in terms of the horizontal. Now, if you look at the angle, here's my horizontal. So this 38.0 is below the horizontal. And so now we can do our little victory dance, put a box around it, and there's our final velocity of the projectile. So if we were really, really interested, we could figure out, well, if something has a velocity of 21.6 meters per second, is that going to break anything? Is that going to break the roof? I don't know doesn't really matter, but that might be why we are doing this physics problem, and now you can do this type of problem.